Hi, in this video I'm looking at this problem here where we've got an ice skater pushing on a large block of ice. The ice skater is exerting a force of 19 newtons and we want to calculate the acceleration of both the skater and the ice after the push. So basically what we've got is we've got a very smooth surface, our surface of ice, and we've got our large block of ice sitting on that surface and then an ice skater has come up and given that block a push. Now that means that the ice skater is pushing on that block with this force of 90 newtons. And so if we define that as our positive direction, the block, because of Newton's third law that every force has an equal and opposite reaction, the block is pushing back on the ice skater with a force of negative 90 newtons in the opposite direction. So we've got these two forces and we want to work out what then that makes the acceleration of the two objects be. Because theoretically, because we've got an ice skater and a block of ice all theoretically sitting on ice, after this push the ice skater is going to go one way and the block of ice is going to go the other because they've got no grip. So let's have a look at this. So there's two basically problems here. We've got the ice skater on one side and then we've got the block of ice on the other. So they're the two scenarios we have to think about separately to then get our answer. So these come down to basically F equals MA. So we've got the force of the skater equals 90 newtons. And we know that F equals MA. So the force of the skater is going to be the mass of the skater times by the acceleration of the skater. So that means that the acceleration of the skater is going to be the force implied on that skater minus Oh, sorry, divide by the mass of the skater. So now the acceleration of the skater, well the force on that skater is actually our blue force here. The skater is pushing on the block of ice, which means that the ice is pushing back on the skater with a force of negative 90 newtons. And then we're going to divide by the weight of the skater and the weight of the skater was 72 kilograms. And so then if we work this out, that means that the acceleration of our skater is going to be, well, negative five over four or negative 1.25 meters per second. So that's our skater. So now we just got to do the opposite for our ice block. So if we go and have a look at our ice block and do the same thing, we've got force equals mass times acceleration. So the force of the block is going to be the mass of the block times by the acceleration of the block. So the acceleration of the block is going to be the force on the block divided by the mass of the block. So if we then have a look at this, the force of the block in this case, the force on the block is our 90 newtons implied by our ice skater. And then we can divide by the mass of that block, which is 200 kilograms. And so the acceleration of our block is going to be, that works out to be 9 twentieths or 0 0.45 meters per second. So that gives us our answer. So basically our answer is that the skater accelerates at uh, 1.25 meters per second in the opposite direction to the ice block, which accelerates at 0 0.45 meters per second. 
And that's all the positive and the negative are doing here is just that one's in the opposite direction to the other because we've defined that the direction the ice skater is pushing is positive and therefore the direction the ice block is pushing is negative. But really it doesn't matter, it just means that one is in the opposite direction to the other. So that's it. If we've got two objects pushing on each other, Newton's third law says that they push in opposite directions to each other and equal in strength. And then we can go and use F equals MA, Newton's second law, to determine things like acceleration. And of course, one is always in the opposite of direction of the other then.